T. Lobsang Ramp, for the Cave of the Ancients. Originally published in 1963. A small glimpse into past history of the Earth and its inhabitants who hid highly technical equipment which to this day remains hidden. Lobsang with his guide, the great Lama Minya Dondup, gets to visit where this technology is hidden and sees with his own eyes this wondrous equipment. This technology is waiting for those who can use it for the benefit of mankind and their time is drawing near. It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Forward. This is a book about the occult, and about the powers of man. It is a simple book in that there are no foreign words, no Sanskrit, nothing of dead languages. The average person wants to know things does not want to guess at words which the average author does not understand either. If an author knows his job he can write in English without having to disguise lack of knowledge by use of a foreign language. Too many people get caught up in mumbo jumbo. The laws of life are simple indeed, there is no need at all to dress them up with mystic cults or pseudo-religions. Nor is the need for anyone to claim divine revelations. Anyone can have the same revelations if they work for it. No one religion holds the keys of heaven, nor will one be forever damned because he enters a church with his hat on instead of his shoes off. In Tibet Lama's re-entrances bear the inscription a thousand monks, a thousand religions. Believe what you will, if it embraces do as you would be done by you will get by when the final call comes. Some say that inner knowledge can only be obtained by joining this cult or the cult and paying a substantial subscription to. The laws of life say, seek, and you shall find. This book is the fruit of a long life, training gold from the greater Lamasaris of Tibet and from powers which were gained by a very close adherence to the laws. This is knowledge taught by the ancients of old, and is written in the pyramids of Egypt, in the high temples of the Andes, and the greatest repository of occult knowledge in the world, the highlands of Tibet. He resumed, This is what we saw and heard, and you shall see and hear in the not too distant future. Thousands and thousands of years ago there was a high civilization upon this world. Men could fly through the air in machines which defied gravity, men were able to make machines which would impress thoughts upon the minds of others, thoughts which would appear as pictures. They had nuclear fission, and at last they detonated a bomb which all but wrecked the world causing continents to sink below the oceans and others to rise. The world was decimated, and so, throughout the religions of this earth we now have the story of the flood. I was unimpressed by this latter part. Sir, I exclaimed, we can see pictures like that in the Akashic record. Why struggle up dangerous mountains just to see what we can more easily experience here? Lobsang said my guide gravely, we can see all in the astral and in the Akashic record, for the latter contains the knowledge of all that has happened. We can see that we cannot touch, in astral travel we can go places and return, but we cannot touch anything of the world. We cannot, he smiled slightly, take even a spare robe nor bring back a flower. So with the Akashic record, we can see all but we cannot examine in close detail those strange machines stored in those mountain halls. We are going to the mountains, and we are going to examine the machines. How strange, I said, that these machines should of all the world be only in our country. Oh, but you are wrong, explained my guide. There is a similar chamber at a certain place in the country of Egypt. There is another chamber with identical machines located in a place called South America. I have seen them, I know where they are. These secret chambers were concealed by the peoples of old so that their artifacts would be found by a later generation when the time was ready. This sudden rock fall accidentally bared the entrance to the chamber in Tibet, and once inside we gained the knowledge of the other chambers. But the day is far advanced. Soon seven of us, and that includes you, will set out and journey once again to the Cave of the Ancients. For days I was in a fever of excitement. I had to keep my knowledge to myself. Others were to know that we were going to the mountains on a herb-gathering expedition. Even in such a secluded place as Lazava, were always those on the constant lookout for financial gain, the representatives of other countries.